Uh, this week, uh, our topic is giving that costs nothing. Uh, we're going to look at David, King David, and his giving practices. So I want to talk to you today about giving. Now, my practice as a pastor is to preach through the Bible. I'll take a section of the Bible, and I'll just kind of preach right through it. And uh, every once in a while, we'll come to a section that has to do with the subject of giving. So that's what we have today. Uh, we're going to look at David's practice of giving, and I think it's one of the reasons he's called a man after God's own heart. He was very generous with God. He trusted God with his money. I think we need instruction on this whole area of giving and managing money. Uh, I'm going to go out on a limb and suggest that most of you did not have parents who taught you biblical principles of giving, or even biblical principles of money management. Uh, 78% of Americans are broke, according to Dave Ramsey. In other words, they just go from paycheck to paycheck. 64% can't cover a $1,000 emergency. So if the dishwasher goes out or the refrigerator or something goes wrong with a car, they are in trouble. 28% don't have a single penny saved. So why don't you turn to your neighbor and discuss this question, what were you taught by your parents about this whole subject of giving and money management? All right, so turn in your Bible to uh, 2 Samuel 24. Uh, we're going to look at some of David's uh, practices about giving. So starting at verse 18, on that day, Gad, went, Gad's one of the prophets, went to David and said to him, go up and build an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Aronu, the Jebusite. So David went up as the Lord had commanded through Gad. When Aronah looked and saw the king and his officials coming toward him, he went out and bowed down before the king with his face to the ground. So David's going to offer a sacrifice to God. Why? Well, because he sinned. This was his sin of uh, insisting that Joab and the military people count all the soldiers in Israel. David was getting proud, and he wanted to see how many soldiers does he have. And then he got convicted by God that that was wrong motive, and uh, uh, so he felt bad. And so he's going to offer a sacrifice to stop God's punishment of a plague. Aaronu said, Why has my Lord come to his servant? To buy your threshing floor, David answered, so I can build an altar to the Lord, that the plague on the people may be stopped. Aaronu said to David, Let my Lord the king take whatever he wishes and offer it up. Here are oxen for burnt offering, and here are threshing sledges and ox yokes for the wood. Your majesty, Aaronu, gives all this to the king. All Arnu also said to him, May the Lord your God accept you. So Arnu wants to give to the king uh, everything he needs. Uh, but David answers, But the king replied to Arnu, No, I insist on paying for you for it. I will not sacrifice to the Lord my God burnt offerings that cost me nothing. He says, I'm not going to give something that cost me nothing. This uh, actually becomes a biblical principle about giving. Our giving to be acceptable to God, has to represent some sacrifice. We're giving up something in order to give uh, to God. Now, I want you to turn over to 1 Chronicles, if you would, just a couple chapters back, chapter 29. So David um, wants to build a temple for God. And uh, God says, no, you're commander of the army. Uh, you've shed a lot of blood, uh, but your son Solomon... He's going to build the temple. So David at least gathered all the provisions. And so we read a little bit about what he gathered in 1 Chronicles 29.2. With all my resources, this is David talking, I have provided for the temple of my God gold for the gold work, silver for the silver, bronze for the bronze, iron for the iron, wood for the wood, as well as onks for the settings, turquoise, stones of various colors, and all kinds of fine stone and marble, all of these in large quantities. Besides, in my devotion to the temple of my God, I now give my personal treasures. So all that was kind of like uh, the is Israel uh, gifts from the, you know, the government. Now I give above and everything I have promised 
provided for this holy temple. 3,000 talents of gold and 7,000 talents of refined silver. You know, if you add that up, it comes out to about $870 million. You say, well, where did David get that kind of money? Well, remember, he expanded Israel about 10 times over, conquered all the nations around them. Israel was the strongest nation in, at that time in that area. And uh, so they were very wealthy. So then he says to his uh, leaders, in, in, uh, uh, why don't you guys do the same? Now, who is willing to consecrate themselves to the Lord today? Then the leaders of families, the officers of tribes of Israel, the commanders of the thousands and commanders of hundreds, and the officials in charge of the king's work gave willingly. They gave toward the work of the temple 5,000 talents, talents and 10,000 derricks of gold, 10,000 talents of silver, 18,000 talents of bronze, and 100,000 talents of iron. If you count that up, they gave even more, over a billion dollars. So the leaders gave, and then the people followed by giving generously. So what do we get out of this? A man after God's own heart, part of it is trusting God with our finances and giving generously to Him, trusting that He'll replenish our supply. I uh, hope you have a good study. Go through the journal and uh, pray for each other. Uh, have a great time together. Thanks.